Hi, welcome to Learn the Stats. Today we're going to be going over how to read a T table and how to read a Z table or a normal distribution table. I wanted to first start off with going over the Z table because I find the Z table to be much more intuitive than the T distribution. You don't have that degrees of freedom, you just kind of have exactly what you're looking for. You have the critical value, associate the critical value to a probability, and vice versa. And I'll show you how to do both. So say you got a z-score of 1.32. Okay, so that's our z-score. How would you read this on this table? So first, you make sure that you're looking at the table uh, that's reflective of what you're used to. So in this case, everything to the left of the critical value is filled in, so that's the probability you're looking for. Sometimes you'll find tables that go the other way. The biggest difference is because it's symmetric, it's really just understanding that it's 1 minus the probability to get the reverse. So if you had the gray area going the other way, 0 0.01, it would be 1 minus 0.5040. So that's, that's, what, that's how it would work. So let's get into it. You have 1.32, so you come over here, so you have the Z, and you come down to 1.3, and you're looking for 2. And so... This is the point zero 0.02 here, so where they cross is right here. So the, uh, the probability that you get is 0 0.9066. So say I wanted to find the probability of 95% and then understand what the critical value is for that. How would, you, how would you do that? Well, you would look through all these probabilities and just find where 95% is. We see right here 0.9495 and 0 0.9505. They're, they're clearly the same distance apart from 95%. And we know it's 1.6. So it's 1.645. Take an average there, in fact. That's what most people use for the critical value when it comes to 95%. Another question would be, all right, well, what if I want the opposite? How would you associate that? And what you have to do is some simple math. Yeah, and I have another video that goes over that, and I'll, I'll link it here. But how you would understand that in terms of the limits, it would just be the negative. So if you were looking at from 5% to 95%, so you want a 90% confidence interval, put a negative in front of the 1.6. Uh, because again, this is symmetrical, and you're trying to find uh, the middle 90%, and you have on the outside 5% greater than and less than. And so it really is just that simple. You just put a negative sign in front of it. So if I wanted to know what negative 0 0.01 is, I just do 1 minus 0 0.5040 to give you 0 0.4960. So that's what negative 0 0.01 would be in terms of probability. And so the, the whole table works that way because, again, the normal distribution is symmetrical. So the T distribution has a few different or rather the t-table, but the t-table has a, a different aspect to it because you're including degrees of freedom. And what's important here is that you're not actually finding probability. What you're doing is you're finding a critical value. The only way to get a probability as of right now, for most people, it's through programs. You'd have to find it through either an online calculator or through R, SAS, you know, a number of other softwares if you were looking specifically for the p-value. But in most cases, and I, I show this in my examples for the t-distribution and for t-tests, that you're really looking for a comparison between your calculated t-score and the t-score of a critical value, or if you're looking for a confidence interval. For, you know, they're, they're roughly the same in this, in this context. So uh, if I wanted to look at one tail or two tail, that of course is going to be dependent on your hypothesis test. Your hypothesis will say if it's greater than or it'll say it's less than, not both. Uh, if it's doing both, then that's two tails, and that would be equal or not equal. Say I was looking for something that had two degrees of freedom and had a probability of 95. What I would be looking for is... A 5% difference, right? Because like 1 minus 95 is 5%. That would be the alpha. And so that's reflected here because the area that you're looking for is going to be on a one tail 0 0.025 on the upper limit, but also 0 0.025 on the lower limit. 
So you're looking at the middle 95%, and that's what the two-sided score here is. And in this case, for two, you see that it matches at 4.303. Now, say I wanted the same thing, but for one-sided, you'd have to actually move over a column because for one tail, you have 0 0.025. So you'd have to go down one to 0 0.05, and you would get 2.92. So those are quite different in terms of the value that you need to get above or below. So if I'm doing a two-sided, I know that my critical value could be positive 4.3 or negative 4.3. The same is true for the one tail, except the one tail is going to only be one of those, and it's going to be based off your hypothesis. And remember, these are just critical values that you're finding and you're comparing it to the t values that you calculated in your t test. I know for some people, especially me when I was learning this, it was easier for me to use the z table and then jump to the t table as opposed to how I ended up teaching it because of you know the coursework that I taught had uh, a set schedule. I had to teach the t table first and then the z table. Uh, unfortunately, most people get confused uh, between the two because of the confusion on the onset of the t-table understanding. Hopefully this has been helpful, and if it has, please like or comment. I really appreciate the feedback, or if you thought this was terrible, please leave a dislike. Either way, I'd love to know the response because it helps me make better videos. So thank you for watching, and stay nerdy, my friends.